<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. But it is interesting. I mean, it's like, it's the the good aspects of it are, I'm sure, far outweigh the negatives. You know, most people are just enjoying themselves, meeting nice people, meeting like-minded people, traveling around. Like my fear, obviously humor aside, but my fears are probably fairly unfounded, right? But isn't that kind of how it is with life? Like most most people that you meet, like m the vast majority of people, are really pretty nice. Like this is well intentioned. A, yeah, it's a really safe time to be a person. You know, I mean, almost all interactions you have with people on a daily basis are safe and fairly friendly. Even like rude people are like, what's the big? Do they say a word? You know, like most. They're not gonna no harm you. Yeah, most almost nothing happens most of the time. But we're so obsessed with the news. Where you tune in to you know any news channel, all you're getting is the collective bad news of Shark. seven billion people, because that's what sells. If it bleeds, it leads. Run with it, Mike. And Mike runs with it. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is that's actually a very, when you really look at it that way, that's a very positive trend that people are doing this and hosting, the hosting people. Shared shared economy. Yeah, but it's just that's really nice. You know, it's nice that people will offer up their couch for free. Yeah. It's good stuff. It is good stuff. So do you ever stop and think, like, what if I hadn't gone on this journey of exploration and I stayed an accountant and you would be living that life of the droning existence where every day you just fucking showing up at the same place, and crunching numbers and hating life and wishing for some kind of adventure or something different no i i can't i can't relate to that i i think no matter what whether it was at or something i think i would have yeah you know, i'm too impatient you know i get bored too easily something you know i would have done something but a lot of people don't a yeah. lot of people are like you and they just never make that move they never they never take that chance. So yeah, I think when I talk to even a lot of my friends that are still doing, I'm not going to call them crappy jobs, but you know, because I think they do provide a lot of things that they like. You know, security. You can't. Some people love that security, like getting yeah. a paycheck. You know. Yeah. Um, but it's like I, I don't think they view it like that. It's not like oh, this may not be the best thing, but I like it. You know, it's not like a, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like some some people think this is so bad or i i just can't i just have to like i just don't think that 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 threshold ever crosses most people you know yeah uh, well you know p people vary you know the the personality types that go on that trail i mean that's like a very very extreme personality type but i think most people have a certain amount of if not wanderlust at least curiosity it's just a matter of how much of it do you how much of it do you nurture how much of how much of that that needed to feed yeah. right there's also there's also a real problem than not recognizing the finite nature of existence you know i mean just when you're 20 especially or 21 or whatever it is when you enter into these jobs you don't realize like hey man you've only got like a few decades right of of good times you could do this for 40 years yeah easily Oh, easily, easily. Yeah. And then we've all met those people that have done it for 40 years, and they're just beaten down by life, and they have that dull, desperate look in their eyes. It's just this sadness in their eyes where their life is just, it's not, it's not good. It hasn't turned out well. There's not a lot of joy there. Yeah, and hold on to the vacations big time. <gasps> oh, you're scaring the shit out of me, Chris. You're scaring the shit out of me. So you, in the middle of doing all this, right? So you do this, you go on this crazy seven month adventure and when it's over, what was that like? When you, when you hit the end and you realize, is there like a bell you ring or anything like that? I should put a bell up there. So, I mean, going northbound, there's, there's like the, there's like this epic Mount Katata and it's like a beautiful big mountain. Um, one of the, like the most epic climbs. Um, that's in Maine. So if you go south, you end in Georgia and you end on Springer Mountain, which is just not as not as epic, not as dramatic, you know, you're right. So but yeah, I mean, you finish it. There's just a plaque. And it's like, dude, you finished. Really? And you touch the plaque? Do you have to touch it? What just, if you get right before it and you quit? It's like, like right it's, before, like a foot before. Fuck this. Just collapse. Yeah, like two no, feet before I'm, the plaque. Yeah, no, I'm Does good. It count? Yeah. That's it. So that's that's in Maine. That's the in, that's the finish. In, that's um, the finish. And uh, yeah, wow. for Northbounders.
How many people fake it? Take a picture of that. Dude, it, dude. You can go hike that in one day, yeah, for yeah, sure. That's, you would, at least you would, I would probably do that. I'd go hike it in a day and then get that <laughs> weird feeling of watching these people that are covered in two inches of grime climb up that hill. Can you pull up Springer? Look at that guy. Pull up that Springer motherfucker. Button? Look at that guy. That guy looks like he's been hiking for seven months. Hiker. What's it called? Spring S Springer, Springer Mountain? Springer Mountain. Yeah. Look at that guy's face. Jesus Christ. He's just all hair and... <laughs> So, um, there you go. Yeah, well, that's the uh, that's where it starts. Is uh, that the gateway? That's that's what's called the approach trail. It's not the um, it's like I like how it has like a, an awning. That's that's the actual plaque on the end, but that's not a great shot of it. There you go. That's it. So, that's where it starts. Yep, that's National it. Scenic Trail. Now, who established this? Uh, so there's a guy named Benton, Benton Mackay. Um, Imagine trying to talk people into doing that with you. Like, when you first started doing that, like, what year did this guy do this? Uh, I know I know these dates, but I, I don't. I think Take a guess. 30s, 30s? 30s. So imagine, 1930s, fucking Great Depression, that old deal. Those are the people back then. And this guy says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk all the way up to Maine, and I'm going to start a whole movement. A bunch of other people are going to do it as well. Yeah. They're probably like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> And, uh, Get a job, hippie. Yeah, the CCC at the time was, you know, helping construct all the uh, the trails. Look at that, Springer Mountain, Georgia, eight point five miles. Mount, how to say it? Katahdin. Katahdin, Maine, two thousand one hundred eight point five miles. Those point five are a motherfucker. That last point five, oh. So when you did it and you touched the sign and you're like, all right, I did it. I cried. Did you? I did. I literally collapsed. Wow, like you fell to your knees? It was like, it was seriously one of the most emotional times of my life. Like, I would imagine. I was just, yeah, even even like that morning I woke up and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is this is ending, you know? It was like so much, just so long. I'd been thinking about it from, yeah, I mean, childhood, you know? And then it was like not only thinking about it for, you know, a decade, but then it was actually hiking the darn thing for six months and it was just like getting there. It was like, by that time, like I had stress fractures forming in my feet and- really? uh yeah, I was just in bad shape. I wasn't sleeping well because, you know, at, at night it was getting down to zero degrees every night and my sleeping bag was not cutting it. So I was just like, it was just a lot, man, you know? Stress fractures in your feet, huh? Yeah, I, I was, yeah. And I, I had had stress fractures from cross country in high school. So I knew what they felt like. I'm like, oh, this is coming. It's just a matter of time, you know? 